this is Mrs. Gowan, and today I'm going to talk to you about something that I know how to do. So I'm not a really good cook. I certainly am terrible as a car mechanic, but there is something I know really well, and that's how to write a good email. And this is a skill that you need to have, and it seems, you know, we, we seem to think that you know how to do this, but uh, we have noticed lately that there are many, many people who have no clue how to write a good email. And in our conversations, we've discovered that there are many adults who don't know how to do this correctly. So this is something I'm going to teach you. If you already know how to do it, fine. If not, pay attention, and it's really easy just a few little steps and you can figure it out. Now first I'm going to show you an example of a really terrible email. Okay, so this is one that was to Mr. Cochran and in the subject line there are just a bunch of question marks and here's the email. What are we supposed to do for that story thing? Why we got to write so much? It's just eloquent. Okay, obviously many problems, many, many problems there, and we're going to try to see how do we fix this. Um, Mr. Cochran is unlikely to want to answer this email. He may not even have a clue what it's asking about. Um, at the very least, it's disrespectful, and it's not going to get you the desired information that you want for sure. Okay, so this guy, not so good. Okay, now here is a person who knows how to do this correctly. Hello, this is Mrs. Gowan, and today I'm going to talk to you about something that I know how to do. So, I'm not a really good cook, I certainly am terrible as a car mechanic, but there is something I know really well, and that's how to write a good email. And this is a skill that you need to have, and it seems, you know, we, we seem to think that you know how to do this, but uh, we have noticed lately that there are many, many people who have no clue how to write a good email. And in our conversations, we've discovered that there are many adults who don't know how to do this correctly. So this is something I'm going to teach you. If you already know how to do it, fine. If not, pay attention, and it's really easy. Just a few little steps, and you can figure it out. Now first, I'm gonna show you an example of a really terrible email. Okay, so this is one that was to Mr. Cochran, and in the subject line, there are just a bunch of question marks, and here's the email. What are we supposed to do for that story thing why we got to write so much. It's just eloquent. Okay, obviously many problems, many, many problems there, and we're going to try to see how do we fix this. Um, Mr. Cochran is unlikely to want to answer this email. He may not even have a clue what it's asking about. Um, at the very least, it's disrespectful, and it's not going to get you the desired information that you want for sure. Okay, so this guy, not so good. Okay, now here is a person who knows how to do this correctly, and I'm just going to point out the good parts of this email and why it is good. All right, first, really, we should always use our lrchs.org email. Uh, if you use another email, then it might confuse us as to where this is coming from. So we know everybody who has the lrchs.org, uh, you know, prefix or suffix on the on the uh, email address. So please always use that. Now you're going to have to write emails like this for college and for your business, and so you should always use your uh, the domain email. Like your college will give you an email address, you should use that business, same thing. So always use that. Okay, then this is called the subject line. All right, on the subject line, you should give some sort of indication about what your question or what your business is. All right, that will give Mr. Cochran or whoever's reading it, give him an idea about how much, you know, how, how important this is. Uh, teachers 
get hundreds of emails a day during this cyber time. And so sometimes we have to prioritize. And if we see that subject line, we're going to know that this is a personal communication, something you really need to know. All right, this line is called the salutation, and it's necessary in an email. Dear Mr. Cochran, so that we're clear exactly who we're writing to, and it's a sign of respect to say Mr. Cochran. Okay, then this line or this part of the email could come first or it could come after you have completed your business. Some sort of complimentary little line. Now that might seem a little fake to you, but it's a polite thing to do. And if you dig down deep, you can find something truthful and nice to say about the person to whom you're writing. Okay, so to Mr. Cochran, it wouldn't be hard. You could say something like, I really enjoy your class and appreciate all you have taught us this year. Thank you for your work to make this cyber school time worthwhile for us. Then you get to your business here. I'm confused as to our writing assignment for a rose for Emily. I thought the paper should be three pages long, but my friend in your first period class said it should be eight pages long and at least 2,000 words. Would you please clear this up for me? All right, that's a pretty big problem that this person has, so he needs a response. Now, the last thing that you do before you sign this is to do a closing, and that should be something like sincerely or yours truly or best wishes, followed by a comma, and then your full name. And if you really want to be specific, uh, write down which class, what your title is. This person is in third period American literature. So that's pretty much it. To recap, use your lrchs.org email address. Be sure you put something on the subject line that's going to be helpful. Always use a salutation. Uh, use complete sentences and correct punctuation and spelling. It's always nice to add a line or two um, to compliment the person or to thank the person for his time. All right, that's very, very simple. All you have to do, it might take you a half minute extra to write a nice email like this, but it will save you time in the long run and it will earn you the respect of your teachers. Thank you for listening.